Hi, Paul. And all curious others. You won't get much of an answer here because it's not something I know a great deal about. The curvature of space-time and what the, the different uh, terms represent. So we've, we've got uh, we've got closed space-time, we've got flat space-time, and we've got open space-time. Uh, those three things, those three descriptions, define three possible fates for the universe. The first one, closed space-time, is the equivalent, obviously, of uh, the the Big Bang happening, things flying apart with a, a certain velocity, but also with a certain mutual gravitational attraction which works upon uh, that original expansive force, um, and being overcome by the gravity at some point in the future. So a closed universe is one which expands, stops expanding, and collapses. A flat space-time is one which begins in exactly the same way, but the original force which is expanding the universe is exactly matched by gravitational attraction. Such a universe would come into existence in a Big Bang, all the things would fly apart, but there would come a point in the future where the expansion stops and the, the universe literally hangs there, neither collapsing nor expanding, but remaining at a, a fixed dimension, size. An open universe is one which goes off with a bang and all the pieces, galaxies, just keep flying apart uh, forever or until they decay at some ridiculously far-flung point in the future. In, in, uh, it's not a, a direct analogy, but you can think of a, a, a closed universe as somebody throwing a ball up in the air and having it come down. The Earth's gravitational force, in this case, being the, uh, the analogue of the universe's gravitational force, and the force with which you throw the ball being the initial push of the Big Bang. So a closed one, throw the ball up, it comes down. The universe collapses. Uh, an open universe, with, in that analogy, would be throwing the ball up and it just keeps going. The force with which you threw it was greater than the gravitational attraction concerned. The flat universe, this is where it gets interesting, is where you throw the ball up in the air and at a certain point the force with which you threw it and the gravitation trying to pull it down is exactly matched and the ball hangs in the air. So if you lived in, in that universe or on that planet where that was what happened with the ball you would think that is interesting. Now our universe has always appeared uh, well since we've been looking at the, the curvature of space-time our universe has always appeared rather flat but that isn't surprising if it if it was so curved that it was obvious in a closed sense that would mean that the universe went bang collapse and we wouldn't have had time to exist that curvature in a way is an expression or the lack of curvature is an expression of the age of the universe in which you're carrying out your experiments so it, it is no surprise that it appears to look flat if you imagine um, a circle, just a simple circle drawn on a piece of paper, when you zoom in to look at it in fine detail or on the small scale, which is, when you think about it, pretty much what we do, because we're small creatures with, sm with a small viewpoint, um, it appears quite flat. This is the, the same trick of the eye that you would have if you looked closely at any circle as you zoomed in on the edge of the circle it would appear to flatten out and the finer you could uh, the finer the viewpoint the more flat it would appear to be so the universe has always appeared flat and that's what you'd expect even for something that was curved the 
curvature of the universe, any universe, is merely the expression of how old that universe is. If the curvature was so extreme to be evident, then the universe would have collapsed fairly shortly after its formation, or would have expanded so massively that life wouldn't have been possible. So, if you're an intelligent creature living in a universe where you can ask such questions, the universe is going to appear to be flat, merely because it's, it's got to survive for long enough to life, for life to evolve to ask the question in the first place. Now, the physical laws which I mean, whenever I talk about physical laws, I'm pretty much ignoring um, dark matter and dark energy because we don't know a great deal about them. But even when we take them into consideration, we, we do get this, this appearance of a flat geometry. So, but the other four forces are very, very finely balanced to allow life to be possible. Not intentionally by a creator, but that is just the way they are in this universe. Uh, were things to be changed just a little bit, the, the other laws would have a sort of a domino effect and life would not be possible. The reason I mention this is because I don't believe that the, the universe is closed. There are some good reasons now to believe that it is at least not closed. And there are reasons to believe that it is open, meaning that it will expand forever. Trying to draw the line between a universe that's expanding forever and one that is flat is a matter of observation and what we're trying to look at is the whole universe. And that's going to be a problem for future generations to really try and get a grip on. It's a philosophical objection I have to a flat universe. If the laws in the universe um, are finely balanced to allow life, and it just so happens that those same laws allow for a ball to be thrown up in the air and hang there, that to me is too, too great a, uh, a coincidence. I'm not saying it would mean God, I just think if somebody threw a ball up in the air and I saw it hanging up in the air, I'd think there was a trick involved or that my eyes were deceiving me. So I think if the ball hangs in the air, our eyes are deceiving us and that it is either closed or open and at the moment the evidence points for an open universe that will expand forever. And it's no surprise whatsoever that it appears to be flat and will probably continue to appear flatter as we look at it. Hope that's not too confusing. Um, see you soon.